All right, this is the very first video as we go down the beautiful, wonderful world of trigonometry. And this first video is on circles. Circles are a huge part of trigonometry. So let's first learn about what trig trigonometry is. Trigonometry is the study of the relationship between the lengths and angles of triangles. So at this point, most kids say, well, where the heck do circles fall in? Well, actually, circles play a crucial role in us understanding the relationship between the angles and the lengths of those triangles. So we first got to make sure in this video that we understand everything there, there could be to understand about circles. Okay? All right, so to begin with, we need to make sure we recall the distance formula. And again, you might say, well, what's the distance formula fall into this? Well, it's all going to connect at the very end, trust me. Now, to understand the distance formula, we understand the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean states that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle will equal the squares of the hypotenuse of the triangle. So in a graphical form, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just remember that c is always, 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 always the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Everybody should understand the um, Pythagorean theorem. It's a very famous theorem. We're going to use it a lot this year. All right, so let's find the distances between two points. So we have first, we have negative 3 comma 2 right here. And then we have 2 comma 5 right here. And the idea is how Pythagorean's theorem could be used is if we make a triangle. So first, we um, connect the two dots. This is the distance right here that we want to find. And then we make a nice, perfect triangle. So this triangle has a vertical height of 3. That's the difference of the y's. So 5 minus 2 is 3. It has a horizontal length of... Uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, that's the distance between negative 3 and 2. From negative 3 to 2 is a distance of 5. So then we can use Pythagorean's theorem to say that that hypotenuse is going to be 3 squared plus 5 squared equals that hypotenuse squared. So that's 9 plus 25 equals c squared. Uh, 9 plus 25 is 34. So uh, 34 equals c squared. So the square root of 34 is that hypotenuse. And of course, we could get an approximate answer on the square root of 34. Obviously, 34 cannot be reduced anymore. If it could, we would love to reduce square roots, but the decimal approximate is 5.83. Okay? So that's how we could utilize the distance formula. Now, the Pythagorean theorem form actually helps us build this distance formula. Remember what I went over earlier here. Let me go back here really, really quick. Sorry, and then we'll go back to that. You can write down. The idea is that the vertical distance is the difference in the y's. So 5 minus 2 is where I got 3 from. And the um, horizontal distance is the difference of the x's between 2 and negative 3 is a distance of 5. So that's how we could utilize the distance formula is we we get the idea that if we think of the distance we're trying to find, that's the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse squared is equal to that um, horizontal difference. The horizontal distance is the subtracting the x's. So that's where we get x2 minus x1 squared, right? Because we have squared that, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, plus the vertical distance, which is y2 minus y1 squared. And then to get rid of this square on that c, we take the square root of the entire side. And that's a really bad square root. So anyway, Anyway, we get the distance form. The distance form is the difference of your x's squared, the difference of your y's squared, giant square root around all of it. Now, one thing kids always worry about is, do I have? What about the order I subtract the x's? Well, the good news is, because you're squaring it, the order doesn't really matter. Because if you subtract it and get negative five, or subtract another way and get positive five, the squaring it is still 25 no matter what. So this distance form is really, really important. Now. Let's connect all this back to circles, because if we look at a circle, a circle is defined by two things, its center, h comma k, and its radius, r. With those two things, a circle can be um, identified, it can be created. The idea is that, let's find the distance between that center and any point on the circle, x comma y. So the distance between there, right? is going to be the difference between the x-coordinates, which is x minus h, the difference between the y-coordinates, which is y minus k, square both of those, and we get that r squared equals those values. And then, of course, we could solve for r, the radius, by square rooting both sides. So the big thing is that we get this formula down here, the equation of a circle. So again, the idea of a circle is we're trying to connect the center, the radius, and any random point on that circle, x, y. And the 
connection is found using Pythagorean's theorem, which applies to triangles, but the connection makes sense, right? Because what we want to do is we want to find the vertical distance, which is k and y, so y minus k, that's right here. And we want to find the horizontal distance, which is x minus h, right? x minus h is right here. And then we know that those two values, those two vertical and horizontal distances squared, added together, equals the radius squared. So that's where we get the equation of a circle right here. So please make sure that you write down this equation of a circle. It's really important. We're going to use it a lot. Very simple to use. All right, so here's an example. Write an equation for a circle centered at the point negative 3, comma 2 with the radius of 4. So all we're going to do is use the formula for an equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. So we get x minus negative 3, that's the x-coordinate, squared plus y minus 2, that's the y-coordinate of the center, squared, equals the radius 4 squared. So we clean this up, we get x plus 3 squared, plus y minus 2 squared, equals 16. And voila! Pretty darn easy. That's how simple it is to find the equation of a circle. Very, very simple. Alright, let's talk about another question here. This says, find the points on a circle with radius 5 that is centered at the origin. So I'll talk about what this means, find the points. I'll talk about that in a second. The key thing that we care about is that the radius is 5 and the center is the origin. That's very easy to work with. So we get x minus 0, that's the x-coordinate of the center, plus y minus 0, that's the y-coordinate of the center, squared, equals the radius 5 squared. So basically the zeros don't matter, so we get x squared plus y squared equals 25. So this is a nice, beautiful circle centered at the zero with the radius of five. Now, what do we mean by find the points? Now, think about a circle. There are an infinite number of points on a circle, x comma y. But there's also an infinite number of points that are not on the circle as well, right? There's a whole bunch of points in the world. So, for example, let's just say I know that one x value is three, right? I know for sure that there is an x value of three. How do I find the y? Well, all I got to do is plug it in. So we get three squared plus y squared equals 25. So that's 9 plus y squared equals 25. That's y equals 16. 25 minus 9 is 16. Take the square root. That means that y could be positive or negative. Square root of 16, which is 4. So it's actually two values. And that makes sense because um, if the x value is 3, it could be, you know, if I'm thinking here, right, here's my centered at zero, right? If I have an x value of three, I could be up here at positive four, three comma four. It could also be down here at three comma negative four. So there are two points there, three comma four and three comma negative four. Very, very, very easy, very, very simple to understand. Um, but just be aware that a circle in of itself, like this, is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. Remember the vertical line test, a function says that every input, every x, is only allowed to have one y. Well, this is an x, 3, that has two y's, three and negative, uh, 4 and negative 4. Completely okay, though, because no one ever said this is a function. We're talking about circles, okay? Pretty easy there. All right, now let's move on, take a look at a couple more examples. Find the x-intercepts of a circle with radius 6 centered at the point 2, comma 4. So find the x-intercepts. We'll get to that in a second. First, I care about the radius and I care about the point. So let's see here. x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals the radius squared 36. Notice how I'm slowly skipping steps as we get more and more used to this formula. It becomes very easy to work with. All right, so here is my equation for this circle. Now it wants me to find the x-intercepts. Keep in mind, where do x-intercepts occur? X-intercepts occur when this circle, and I'm just going to kind of uh, briefly draw the circle. So here, 2, 4, somewhere up in here, and then here's this circle with radius 6, right? X-intercepts occur where the y is 0. So how easy it is to find x-intercepts? All i got to do is turn this y into a big, beautiful 0. So I get x minus 2 squared plus negative 4 squared equals 36. Why negative 4? Because if I turn that y into a 0, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. x minus 2 quantity squared plus 16 equals 36. x minus 2 squared equals 36. Uh, 36 minus 16 is 20. 
And at this point, now I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get x minus 2 equals, um, that's a bad equal, sorry, equals plus or minus the square root of 20. I am going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to come over here so I have a little bit more room. x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 2 radical 5. Again, 20 is 4 times 5. 4 comes out as a 2. And I finally get x equals positive 2 plus or minus 2 radical 5. I just added this 2 over. So I get two intercepts. I get x equals 2 plus 2 radical 5. And again, you can find that decimal using your calculator. And I also get x equals 2 minus 2 radical 5. So those are my two intercepts, my two zeros, right? And that makes sense. Here's, a, here's one right here on the negative side. And here's one right here on the positive side. There's definitely going to be two intercepts there. Very, very simple, right? Connected to things we've actually been talking about this year. All right, one last question for you here. Find where the line f of x equals 4x intersects the circle x minus 2 plus y squared equals 16. Let's first talk about this circle real quick. Its center would be 2 comma 0 because there's my h value right there, x minus h. That means it's 2. Uh, there is no y. It's just y minus 0. So I could, that's why I knew the y was 0. And my radius is 4. So I'm just going to kind of draw us a little rough picture of this here. So this would be over here, 2 comma 0, and then has a, have a radius of um, 4. So again, it's really a terrible circle, but you get the general idea. Well, here comes a line 4x. Here comes a line 4x. And I want to find where this line intersects my circle. So, very, very simple to do. So, another way of writing y f of x equals 4x is y equals 4x, right? That's what it means, y equals 4x. So, basically, what I want to do is I want to take this y and replace it with this y over here, because I'm assuming that if you're intersecting, you must be equal. So, that means that y equals 4x. That means this y right here would equal 4x. So, I get x minus 2 squared plus, instead of y, I'm going to write 4x squared equals 16. So I get x minus 2 squared plus 16x squared equals 16. And now i got a quadratic to solve. Well, let me solve this quadratic. Well, I'm going to have to multiply everything out here. So let's see, this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's x minus 2 squared plus 16x squared equals 16. Okay, working out so so far so good here. So let's see here. On the left-hand side, that's 17x squared. Uh, that's a minus 4x. And now remember, i got to get a 0 over here. So I'm going to subtract this 16 over to here. So 4 minus 16 would be negative 12. All right, at this point, I'm going to have to solve this. I could complete the square. don't know if I really want to complete the square with the 17 in front. So I'm going to go ahead and find the quadratic formula here. x squared equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times um, 17 is A, times negative 12 is C, all divided by 17 times 2 is 34. Okay, um, let's see here, moving on, 4 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 16 minus 4 times 17 times negative 12 is 832, 832 all divided by 34. Okay, which means I'm actually going to have two solutions here, 4 plus the square root of 832 all divided by 34. And that gives me one possible answer for x is 0 0.9660. Another answer would be 4 minus the square root of 832. And divide that by 34, and I get another answer of negative 0 0.7307. Now keep in mind, these are the two x-coordinates. These are the two x-coordinates. That's the x-coordinate right here. And I'm kind of getting a little bit messy. I'm using different color. That's the x coordinate of that point where I intersect, and here's the x coordinate of that point. So it's no no wonder that one's positive, one's negative. However, I need to find the intersection points. Right? Intersection points are x comma y. So what happens here is I have two points. So the first point is point nine six six zero, and I need to find that y. I'll do that in a second. The other point is negative point seven three zero seven comma y. Now the y coordinate can be found by actually using either one of our equations: the one right here, y equals four x, or this equation right here. Actually, I guess I should circle this equation right here. But which one is clearly easier to solve for y? 
bingo, y equals 4x, right? So all I got to do is take my x value times it by 4, and I can get my y value. So 0 0.9660 times 4 gives me a y value of 3.864. Negative 0 0.7307 times 4 gives me this guy's y coordinate of negative 2. 0.9228. Sorry, I didn't really leave enough room there. Negative 2.9228. So anyway, those two points right there are the two intersecting points of 4x and my circle. So, a little bit of a weirder problem there. Definitely got some weird square roots going on there. So I got these two decimals. But again, don't be afraid of decimals. Just make sure you keep four decimals. No big deal. So that's a very quick video on circles. Key thing you need to remember is the formula for a circle. So please make sure you have that formula written down. And the other things that we learned in this video is basically how to work with a circle, right? How to find intersection points, how to find zeros, and just how to find a circle. So make sure all of that is very easy to you. So hopefully that was a nice quick review about circles.